The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 88. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Thank you for joining us today on the Entrepreneur's Library. Today we have Alan Fox, author of People Tools for Business, 50 Strategies for Building Success, Creating Wealth, and Finding Happiness. Welcome, Alan, and thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Will you take just a moment to introduce yourself and tell us just a little bit about you personally? Sure. My name is Alan Fox. I'm 74 years old. I've had a uh, long uh, and very successful business career. At first, I was a CPA with a national CPA firm, then an attorney with my own law practice for a number of years. And then finally, I formed a commercial real estate company, ACF Property Management, Inc. I like to keep under the radar, so it says property management, nothing exciting, but we uh, now have a portfolio of about $1.5 billion of shopping centers throughout the United States. And um, been very, very successful, and I wanted to pass um, some interesting ideas along to um, everybody who will read my book. That's excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Now, let's jump right into the book you were just referencing, People, Tools for Business, which was just made available for purchase on September 30th, 2014. And now we're going to move quickly, but we're going to cover the top questions that our listener slash reader want to get answered. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing People, Tools for Business? The inspiration is this. I went back to school, got a master's degree in education, and one day a group of us were discussing vocational counseling. In other words, you know, what job should you get? And all of us in this group had the idea that a job is a bad thing and we have to find the least uh, horrible job we could find for people. I don't think that's true. I think that you can have fun and you can do what you should do and have fun doing it. And People Tools for Business is about doing things a little differently in business. I have some very uh, different ideas and enjoying yourself at the same time. Excellent. So what would you say makes your book different from others regarding the same topic? Well, I'm not so serious about it. I have short chapters. You do not have to start at chapter one and read through chapter 50. You can start in chapter 13, if you like, and chapter 42. Uh, Each chapter is pretty short, two, three, four, five pages. And um, people tell me they sit down and intend to read the book for 10 minutes and end up finishing it in two hours. Great. That was actually my next question, which was how would you want the reader to engage with, uh, with your book? So they can, they, can, they can read it from front to back or they can jump in and jump out as needed. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Read it on an airplane, put it in your bathroom, read it when you have a few minutes. Um, uh, and watch out because your wife's going to get a hold of it and she's going to read it first because uh, we like the book a lot. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, very good. Well, Alan, we're to my favorite part of the entire interview, and that's where I hand over the mic and uh, allow you to take the next, uh, you know, five, 10 minutes and, and take us through, take a deep dive of your book. Will you do that for us? Absolutely. Thank you. I, I think first, uh, you know, I'll talk about uh, one of the chapters called Catch the Up Elevator. Uh, the other day, a Saturday, I was leaving my house uh, to come to the office, and I was, you know, feeling a little bit down and not too happy. But I thought, you know, hey, I wrote a, a, a book on business, Catch the Up Elevator, meaning every day you wake up and just say you're on the ground floor of life and you have a choice. You can push the button for the basement or the sub-basement or you can push the uh, elevator button and go to the penthouse. And I think that's largely up to us. So first of all, Catch the Up Elevator in the morning. There's another chapter, Leave Grumpy at Home. In my first book, People Tools, I wrote a chapter on laugh. And you know, I used to think that when you uh, you uh, smile, you feel happier because you. So that's why you smile. But current research indicates when you smile, just the very act of smiling, turning up the corners of your lips, the endorphins flow in your brain and you feel happier. So I would say let's start with catching the up elevator every morning, leaving grumpy at home, and uh, and putting a smile on your face. And then. Oh, one of my really favorite chapters is The Magic Piano, and I've blogged on this. I had a, a player piano at a cabin at Lake Arrowhead at a resort near Los Angeles many, many years ago. And my partner's four-year-old son saw the piano I put on a row, and it starts playing, and the keys start going. And this four-year-old boy looks at that. He says, a magic piano. 
the kids at school are never going to believe this. And I think if you look at the world, if you look at the trees and the sky and the clouds as a, as a, as a magic piano, something really dumbfounding. I mean, every time I look at a 747 airplane, I say, how, how can that thing fly? That's just magic. And if you look at the world in that way, I think that uh, you're going to have more fun and get deeper into, uh, and, and, into, into life. In terms of business, I have a different take on business than almost anybody. I wrote a column uh, for the Huffington Post about the dreaded annual review, and that's a chapter in the book. Look, the annual review, we save everything for a year, and then we tell the employee, okay, uh, here's what you did well, here's what you can improve. Now, look, in football or in other sports, if the coach couldn't tell the players what to improve until the end of the season, you'd think that's ridiculous. Well, I think it's ridiculous to wait until the end of the year. I think you should be re reviewing employees every day or every week, certainly, and telling them how they can improve. That's the manager's job. So the dreaded annual review where you have to give people bad news doesn't have to be dreaded at all. It's really a review of the manager and not the employee. It's a review on how well the manager communicated to the employee during the entire year. So let's take dreaded out of annual review. I have a chapter, ready, aim, meaning fire. And you know, I have found, when I was a young attorney, I had a secretary and she was marginal for me and after about six months, I fired her. And a year later, in the lunchroom of the same office building, she approached me and said, remember me? I said, sure. And she said, well, now I am working for the attorney in the penthouse. And I thought, well, good, good for you. And she said, and he thinks I'm the best secretary he ever had. And I believe her. She found a better niche for herself. And I know that being fired, that's just one job that most managers absolutely hate. They hate firing people. And getting fired is tough. I mean, you lose an income, you face insecurity, you face the unknown, which is, I think, what all of us are most afraid of. And... <clears throat> and that's tough. However, if you look at it as an opportunity to get a position which is more suited to you, your talents, your taste, etc., I think you'll do better. And a number of people that, frankly, I have fired are now doing much better. And some other ideas I have which are a little bit different, you know, be a contrarian. Um, my daughter, uh, Jill, wrote the foreword for People Tools for Business. And she reminded me in 2008, I, I was concerned about $500 trillion of derivatives floating around the world. And I told her, I think the stock market's going to crash. And she called her bank and said, I want to liquidate. The bank said, no, 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 no. Everything is wonderful. They set out two analysts to persuade her to keep her, uh, her, her stock uh, investments. And she didn't. And she sold. And that was the middle of 2008. And two or three months later, the market crashed. So, you know, be a contrarian. Don't just take everyone's word for something. If everything is done well for the past three or four years, we all assume that it will continue doing well. I say don't do that. And if it's done badly for three or four years, don't assume it's always going to be bad. I almost get amused every time there's a recession because uh, people lose their jobs, doom and gloom. You read about in the newspapers, and that goes on for about three or four years, and that looks okay. And then this year, I'm reading reports that retailers expect 15% more sales this year at Christmas. Well, it's taken a long time. And now people are getting pretty optimistic. I say maybe, you know, Warren Buffett has a great statement. He said, when people get greedy, I get nervous. When people get nervous, I get greedy. Meaning, you know, when the market's going way up, then he kind of backs off. And I think that's a good idea. Another idea in business is... Um, Make little deals your big deal. When I was a young uh, accountant, actually, I was working on this huge deal, which would have taken five years to reach uh, fruition. And I met a banker, David Maloney, and he said, Alan, look, if you do a big deal, you're going to have nothing for five years, and maybe it'll work, and maybe it won't. Why don't you do little deals where you can do one or two a month, so in five years you'll have 20, 30, 40 successful deals? He said, that adds up to more than one possible big deal. So that's another uh, idea I have, that uh, make uh, little deals a big deal. Also, and again, I have a lot of short chapters here, and one of my favorites is don't sue the bastard. I've been involved in enough litigation to know 
that the attorneys do just fine. The parties generally settle almost every time, and they usually settle for what they could have settled for before the litigation began. So I say, if you have a dispute, be rational about it. I am almost never a plaintiff. I do not like to sue people. It really doesn't make much sense, and it certainly doesn't make much money. So I would say, uh, go do it whenever you possibly can. Another uh, another chapter is uh, multi goaling, and here is again where I'm different from most uh, most writers. It's it's uh, Al Quran to talk about multitasking, doing two or three or four things at once. I think that's nonsense. I think that you can do one thing at a time and you can shift very quickly from one to the other. I say, why not do something that's really efficient, which is multi-goaling? In other words, my secretary came to me with a problem a few months ago, and it was uh, almost noon, so I said, hey, let's go to lunch. We went to lunch. So what did we accomplish during an hour? First of all, we had lunch. Secondly, we solved the problem. Third, we talked about other problems that we could solve together. Fourth, we reconnected socially and you know found out what was going on in each other's lives. So we had a number of goals. I had a number of goals which were met by one lunch. And I think when you think about it, you know, if you go out to a, to the to the park, you can get some exercise, enjoy the fresh air, enjoy time with your family, enjoy a picnic. So I think there are. I'm, I'm very goal-oriented personally, and uh, you know I can give you the list of my top 100 goals in the, in the order, which of course shifts from time to time, but we all have goals, I think, whether we're super aware of it or not, and I think let's, let's get all those goals uh, done at the same time. Uh, another chapter, and I think one thing that d- distinguishes my book is chapter headings, because these are short, punchy people tools you can remember, like ready, set, improvise. None of us knows. I didn't know exactly what I was going to say um, in talking about the book. I mean, we don't write down scripts for our lives. And if we did, when as soon as we get a response from somebody else, we're going to be off our script because we can't write their script. So just get used to the idea that you're going to improvise. And I, I have some interesting ideas on exactly how to do that. Um, another important idea is delayed gratification. I think that you know where I used to not do that was food. I was on what one comedian called a seafood diet. I see food, I eat it. And many of us are like that. And uh, there have been, there, there have been uh, interesting experiments where they put candy on people's desks and they eat a lot of candy. Then they move it six feet away and they eat less. And they move it 20 feet away and they eat even less. And they remove it entirely. They don't eat any. And my delayed gratification was not very good. Now, with money, I've always been happy to delay gratification. I like to save, and I like that process. And when I was in my early 20s, a friend said, buy your wife a dress occasionally. I would say, it's not the dress for $20. It's the $3 a year in income that dress is going to cost me. That's a pretty expensive dress. So I think it pays to think about delayed gratification as, um, as, a, as a tool. Um, another one is, is laugh. You know, sometimes... It's a bad day. And along about 3 or 4 o'clock, you get the third disaster of the day. And I say, just just sit down and laugh. I mean, the universe is out to get you, so why, uh, why, why, why really fight it anymore? I have a quote from uh, Star Trek, from the Ferengi Rule of Acquisition number 185. Uh, if you want to ruin yourself, there are three known ways. Gambling is the fastest. Women are the sweetest. And banks are the most reliable. And, uh, you know, I get, get some jokes, talk to people. Um, another, another tool which you're gonna, everyone will recognize instantly, there was a Harvard business professor who gave one-day seminars on Saturdays. And in the seminar, he handed out the 10 rules of business. Rule number one, don't run out of cash. Rule number 10, don't run out of cash. And he said... The other eight rules are not nearly so important. So I think, you know, a little advanced planning, a little delayed gratification, don't run out of, out of cash. And, you know, Samuel Johnson said something which I take to heart. He said the applause of a single human being is of great consequence. And one of my chapters, chapter number four in People's Tools for Business is applause. Let people know 
that you're on their side, that you back them up and, and give them applause. And kind of the opposite and maybe counterintuitive is I have a chapter, Advertise Your Mistakes. When I was a young attorney, I had to be perfect. I couldn't be seen. I didn't let people see me as making any mistakes ever. It was always somebody else's mistake or it wasn't a mistake or whatever. And then I went back to school and education and I learned that people didn't like that. And so I tried an experiment. When I made a mistake, I just advertised it. I said to people, oh, my goodness, you know, you guys in my office uh, make the smaller mistakes, and I make the big mistakes, and here's, here's a beaut. And you know something? First of all, people like me better because I admit that I'm human. Secondly, they're more likely to own their own mistakes so that we can correct things. You know, if people never think they make a mistake, the problem is you can never do it better. So I say... You know, uh, not not just admit your mistakes, but advertise your mistakes, and um, uh, appreciate an audience of one. I was doing a book reading, and it was a rainy day. It was a walking mall, and aside some some friends of mine, only one member of the public showed up. And you know, I pulled up a chair. I talked to her, and it doesn't matter if you have ten people or a thousand people or one person, just focus and pay attention to the person you have and, and where you are. Um, another chapter, for example, give it away. And by give it away, no, I'm not talking about giving away all your possessions. I'm talking about giving away some of your work. In other words, delegate. Now, I've been doing this for over 45 years, and I still have some things. I get an email, and I don't know quite what to do. And it lasts for two or three or four weeks, and then I find, ah, I'm going to ask somebody else to do it. And I say, why didn't I do that in the first place? You have to trust people you're working with. Business today, not only, I was talking to the dean of the business school, uh, Jim Ellis at USC. He said, Alan, there are no borders in business anymore. And I think that's true. And so we have to have an international outlook, but it's a team effort. I don't think any one person can run any kind of a business successfully. You need help. You need the help of your accountant. You need the help of advertising. You need the help of a human resources person. And delegate all you can and trust them to do the job because when you trust people, then they will want to do a better job. If you don't trust them, they'll think, eh, if I don't do a great job, you'll be in back of me. You'll bail me out. You'll do it yourself. So everybody don't care as much and decide that. You don't trust me, so why should I be trustable? So, you know, these are a lot of the ideas in uh, People Tools for Business, and there are a number of more. Oh, one of my favorites also is ask for a pineapple fluff. You know, one problem we all have is, I think, anger. If someone's angry at you, you want to kind of disappear or wish it didn't happen. And I learned years ago, studying with a psychiatrist, Paul Ware, in Shreveport, Louisiana, that people get angry for one of two reasons. Either they're getting something they don't want from you, or they're not getting something they want. And Paul's uh, suggestion, which I use in my life, and I did this uh, in Las Vegas where my wife was, was late coming down to, to watch the highlight at the old MGM hotel, and I was just, I was just furious. And uh, you know, she was 20 minutes late. We missed the first game. I was very upset. And so she used the technique. She said, what, what, how can I, what can I do right now to help you let it go of your anger? And I said, buy me a pineapple fluff. That was a drink they had uh, available there. Uh, non-alcoholic. And she looked at me, she said, that's what you want? I said, yeah, buy me a pineapple fluff. So she went off, bought me a pineapple fluff, a very nice sweet drink, and I felt better. So ask for a pi pineapple fluff. If you're angry at someone, ask them, tell them what you need to let go of being angry. I used to think that if you're angry enough, long enough, and the other person knows it, that they're going to give me what I want. It tends not to work that way. They tend to just avoid me. So I think that here are a few um, of the uh, many chapters in People Tools for Business, which I think are certainly entertaining to read. I have a couple of quotations at the beginning of each chapter, and um, uh, it's, it's a fun book. It'll give you a different slant on life and business, and this is not just for business people. This is for everybody. I say that you are the sole practitioner of your life, and as such, your life is like a business, and I'm trying to help people to run it better. So Alan, you did an awesome job 
of, of summarizing the book. And there's tons of wisdom in everything that you just, you just laid out. And I, I think this next question might be a little bit difficult, but it's really breaking it down even a step further. And that's that if the reader can only take away one concept, principle, or action item out of everything that you just discussed with us, everything from your book, what would you want that to be? Well, when I was a kid, I thought I'm going to have a very, very short, successful business career. I'm going to find one idea, one product. I'm going to place an ad in a magazine, and I'm going to get a million dollars of orders. It's going to cost me $200,000. I'm going to make $800,000 and retire. You know something? Life doesn't work that way. So I think the one chapter that is really the most important, I call Stick It Out. I was at the first 100th birthday I ever went to, and uh, someone asked the, uh, the birthday boy what his advice was. And, you know, he thought, he stared into space. I thought maybe he hadn't heard the question. We waited, and finally he said, stick it out. And, you know, in harsh economic times, stick it out. If your marriage isn't working great at the moment, stick it out. If you want a career, you're not going to always have success. Stick it out. I think you've got to stick it out, and ultimately you will succeed by sticking it out. And you know all kinds of stories about entertainers and people who did well. Um, they all, or almost all, stuck it out. And I think that's the most important idea I like to uh, leave the reader with. Excellent. And Alan, you, you mentioned a quote earlier, but I'd like to, to possibly grab another one from you. And that's just, do you have a favorite quote from your book? Either one that you wrote that's resonated really well with uh, uh, your audience so far. I know it's only been out for a short while or, uh, or another favorite that you have. Well, actually, I, I have two favorites. One uh, actually was from a review of the book, which was there's so many ideas in this book. It's like Dale Carnegie on steroids. And, you know, I happen to enjoy Dale Carnegie. I read him when I was young, and I, I understand that the Dale Carnegie, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, is uh, very successful on college campuses today. So I, I kind of like that, although I will tell you, I was advertising in the United Airlines magazine, and they said, and I, I'm in there for three months, and for December, they said, change that. That's drug-related. Well, Okay, fine. Um, and uh, a chapter from my book is, or a, a, a short quote from the book, there will be days when the universe seems to conspire against you. When it does, take a deep breath, give silent thanks that your misfortune wasn't worse, and enjoy a good laugh. In other words, you know, don't take it too seriously, because the purpose of life is to have fun and to enjoy yourself. You know, I, I always think you've only got today, make the most of it, and, um, and keep your attitude uh, positive. Great. Now, we'll take that quote and, uh, and this next question, that, you know, a book recommendation. We'll put it into the show notes at the ELpodcast.com because I think a lot of times we pull these quotes and they're, they're kind of a head scratcher as far as, you know, you want to put deeper thought towards them. And uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll put those in the show notes so people can reflect on those later. And that does bring us to our last question, which is, uh, you know, your book is going to create paradigm shifts for different individuals and, and impact their life. What's a book that you've read that had a huge impact on your life. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's a uh, it's a uh, little uh, little off the subject, way off the subject of business. I was at a book reading um, a few weeks ago, and I saw a used copy of this book, which I bought, and I also have it on my uh, on my iPad, and that is the, uh, a book called The Book by Alan Watts. And Alan Watts uh, wrote a number of years ago, I, I think he probably died 40 or 50 years ago. His book is as, ti is as timely now as it ever was. I, I'm rereading it myself. But the book by Alan Watts, he talks about Buddhist ideas and other principles. I read that book when I was probably 18 or 19, and um, it's stuck with me ever since. Thank you for referencing that. That's actually the first time we've uh, had that one referenced. So I appreciate that. And Alan, before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to get more information on you and your book, People Tools for Business? Yes, absolutely. Well, of course, the book People Tools for Business is available at um, bookstores, Barnes & Noble, independent bookstores, and of course on uh, online and Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books a Million. And uh, also, I do have a, 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 a weekly blog. It's free. I think it's very interesting. I have a number of, of followers who just look for it every week. It comes out on Tuesday morning. So if you go to peopletoolsbook.com, that's peopletoolsbook.com, um, 
You'll, uh, you can sign up for my weekly blog. You can unsign up whenever you want to. But I think it's pretty interesting. It's about 600 words. You can read it in three or four minutes. And um, it's very interesting. Also, to get in touch with me, um, email alan, A-L-A-N, at peopletoolsbook.com is uh, where you can get in touch with me. And I try to answer um, all, all emails within a day or two if I possibly can. Because, you know, experience is the best teacher. But I say preferably someone else's experience. Right. So if my experience can benefit you, it, I think it will in the book and also my original book, People Tools, which came out uh, uh, the beginning of this year. Um, I would like to do that. And and was it your first one that has is a New York Times bestseller? Yes, that's correct. People Tools was a New York Times bestseller, number seven. And uh, actually, People Tools for Business was uh, number four on the Los Angeles Times list uh, a week or two ago. Wow, that's incredible. Well, Alan, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your book with us. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. And uh, I really appreciate your interest and, and especially the opportunity to talk in some depth about the book, which is unusual for, uh, as you know, for interviews. So that's been a treat for me. Thanks again for listening in today. If you'd like to get more information on Alan Fox or his book, People Tools for Business, check out the show notes at the EL Podcast. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com, where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.